What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Photo Booth 101 University podcast, the best photo booth podcast in the world. So today's video, the podcast, Tyler and I, we're going to be talking about some hacks that you can do. But one of the biggest hacks I think um, that get me excited is how to get a free photo booth. Clickbait, maybe. We'll see. You guys can let me know in the comments. But something that I, I, I love that I've seen people do is they will purchase their, their photo booths on a credit card, right? Using someone else's money, right? A credit card where they don't have any payments for a year. What they'll do is get the booth, take a ton of photos. And this is something I'm, I've known people to do. So I know this is something that is possible. So boom, get their booth. They start getting leads, right? Meaning they, they'll start their social media accounts, start running ads, starting the networking. Their main focus is getting leads. And what they're doing is when they're getting someone that is a lead, they're getting 50% of what they're going to be charging as a non-refundable deposit. Think about it. It's totally possible, you guys. You can do it too if you really put your mind to it. You could spend the two weeks. You can literally have your booth paid off in two weeks by collecting deposits that are 50%. And if you're charging, let's just say on the low end, guys, 600 bucks for a rental, you're getting half of that, 300. Well, let's just say you do that 30 times in two weeks, which if you're... It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort, but it's totally possible. We're talking about $3,000 for work you have not yet to do. You did not even spend a dime of your own money. You can then take that three grand, pay off that credit card, which probably you don't even need two weeks. So I'm just being you know generous here, but it could be a month. It could be a month and a half. And then boom, you got a free photo booth. You can get a digi booth. That's well under that. It's not even half the price of, of that three grand. So you can even have your iPad pay for a few backdrops if you're doing a digital booth and be covered. I mean, Tyler, what are your thoughts on that, man? Is that crazy? Is that something that you would do? Or, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? You're using the bank's money. So if you have a credit card with a 0% APR for 12 months, which is a year, you boom, that's the bank's money. You're you're buying your photo booth with the bank's money with a 0% APR. If who if people out there who don't know what APR is, that's interest. Okay. You have 0% interest, which means every month, if you decide not to pay that credit card, you know, obviously there's a minimum, maybe 30 bucks, you know, 40 bucks, you know, pay that. But, you know, because then, then you'll, you know, you won't get interest, but it, you know, it's a whole credit card thing. What I'm trying to say is, you know, boom, you have a $2,000 credit card. You could buy a photo booth for 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks. And then, you know, obviously your backdrops and all that stuff. And then like Drew said, get your deposits, you know, start marketing, put your name out there. You know, Facebook, Instagram, just how Drew said, uh, you know, Google ads, you know, my Google business, just like he said. And boom, <clears throat> you're using now other people's money to pay off the bank's money. And none of that money was yours from the from to begin with, because the bank's money bought you the photo booth and the customer's money is what's going to pay the photo booth for you. And then boom, after that, it's all profit from there. Yep. And, you know, I went a different route when I bought my photo booth. I used my tax money. So I did use my hard working, hard working money, but I would say maybe four or five months in, um, you know, I had double already of what my photo booth was worth, you know, to like, I think maybe within realistically, maybe I bought my photo booth in June, the first week of June, my photo booth probably paid off by the middle of July. Love it. Yeah. And dude too, like, you know, let's just say so Let's just say you're a person, maybe you don't even have a good credit score. Maybe you've never even thought about it. You can get creative, maybe find somebody that's willing to take a chance on you, right? Loan you three grand and maybe you promise them, you know, four grand if they give that they give you two months. You know what I mean? They're, like there's, yeah. it, it's, it's totally possible, man. And back to the credit card too, right? You know, if you have decent credit score, you can open up your business account before you even, um, you know, another hacker, you can get your uh, business, get an EIN number, open up a business account, get a credit card under your, you know, for your new company. Then if you, you know, if you're using Chase, Chase currently has a promotion where you sign up for a business credit card, you spend $4,000 or something like that, $3,000 when the first 90 days, they will give you $900 back in credit. So that 4,000, let's just say you spend four grand on your booth, you're really spending 3,100. And again, you're using the bank's money. Doesn't exactly. Money. Yeah, exactly. Then you could literally take those deposits and pay off that thirty one hundred with other people's money. You know, and from there on, everything's profit. You don't got to swipe a credit card again if you don't want to. Yeah. 
but the way you did it is honestly is it's you know i'm kind of stepping back here i'm like i'm saying this is an option but the way you did it is the way i would recommend everyone to do it spend your own money you know that way there's no pressure and um you know you're you're not going to be in a position to where you have to make it work you know um i don't know i just think it's the most responsible thing to do is just to outright own it you know like how you did yeah, um, absolutely you know and then you know, you never know. What if you ended up needing to use that card for an emergency or or something? You're not going to be able to, you know, if you hit your limit and all that, you may not be able to do it. So um, are you a credit card person, Tyler? Like, like when I, I have. Say, a when I, yeah. But when I say that, I mean, like, if you spend on it, are you responsible for the most part? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Yeah. No, my credit cards are paid on time. Um, I just don't like to use it because I don't like to owe money to people. I don't like to owe money to the banks. I don't like to owe money to people. Like, you know, like you mentioned loaning money from people. I'm just that type of person. Where I don't like to owe money. I like to have everything paid off. So the way that I went about it is I bought my photo booth through my tax money. And then for my tax money, I just paid myself back by with all with, like I said, with all my deposits and stuff. Again, I bought the photo booth in June. I got my money back the second week of July. So that's what six weeks after I got my photo booth. And that's not counting the first week. I didn't even have an event. So, Within yeah. five weeks, my money was already back in my bank, you know. Hmm. You and know then what, after by October, November, it was already doubled, tripled. I love to hear that, man. You know, another hack here, since we're talking about um, hacks, is if you buy, okay, if you buy one backdrop stand, right? Let's just say you buy it from us. You have two designs because they're double-sided. You don't necessarily need to buy all of the other designs. You can have your stand. You can have one of the most popular backdrops. And what you can do is take the photos from the website, right? Show them on your website like you have them. And then instead of, you know, buying them all at once, you can literally wait until a customer chooses a backdrop that you don't have. Then take that deposit money, purchase the backdrop. That's that's one thing a lot of people have been doing that we've been selling backdrops to. And um, the feedback's been amazing. It's like, you know what? Like I was, I was ready to drop like 800 bucks to get all of the backdrops. And I'm always saying like, you know, you're better off saving that money, investing it into ads or just, you know, doing the the method that I'm saying, you know, get it as you go. But um, I mean, you probably don't have that problem though, right? Because you, you have the inflatable. That's what you're using most of the time. I use the inflatable most of the time, but I do get a lot of people now asking for backdrops, especially now. I don't know if it's because it's just a seasonal thing or something for like wedding season or something. A lot of people are like, oh, I love the inflatable, but my venue, I've been getting a lot of my venues too small for the, for the inflatable. Uh, so I've been sending them like what backdrops we have. And sometimes I'll even send them the ones that I don't have through your website. Um, like I'll screenshot a few that I think that that person has in mind. Cause I'll tell them like, what's the theme, what's the color. So actually I had one where the lady was like, Oh, Ours is like a, uh, it's a first sweet 16 coming up in October of, you know, this coming year, but she's planning it now. And she's like, oh, it's going to be pink and stuff like that. So I actually sent them uh, that pink marble one that that you have, like the marbly looking one with the other side that's all purple with the squares. And I was like, oh, we could offer you this one because I'm like, I know I could get it earlier beforehand. And she's like, oh, no, I love that one. I want to get it. I like we we're looking into this one. So I'm like, oh, OK, so even though I don't have it directly right now. I know I could always ask Drew, like, hey, I'm going to order this from your website and I'll order it and boom. Yeah. And and look, too, man, like we're not just talking hacks here. Like that backdrop hack is also going to save you space. There's a lot of people, man, that, you know, aren't as, how can I say, like, I know some people that are don't own an apartment or a home. They're literally, you know, renting a room out from a, from from somebody. And um if they were to just have all of this equipment, it would be a crowded place to live too. So it's not just saving you money. That, that backdrop hack will be a space saver too. And um, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen Tyler, but if you go on uh, Facebook, man, there's a couple Facebook groups where people are showing their warehouse. There's some owners, bro, that have no joke, Tyler, over 200 different designs, backdrops. And I don't know, man, that, that would just drive me insane. I'm like, I'm not buying a backdrop to use once. Like I refuse to do it. I don't care. I don't care what value that provides or whatever, man. But I don't know. Just thinking about it. Bro. I don't. I, I I like to. I like to buy as I go. I don't like to buy and have a bulk of stuff that I might not know. Might not how many times it might be used. Like for example, I just ordered from your website the PVC props, the wedding props. Um, you know, you sent them over. I I actually have them here at the house. Um, I only bought those because it was requested by a customer. A customer said, "Do you have?" nice elegant pvc props for weddings and i was like yep i do so 
the point of this is, is never tell your customer no that you don't have it. Tell them, yes, I have it and I can get it for you. And I, and and you know what it even like kind of like makes them even more happier is telling the client that it's brand new, that it's going to be the first time used at their event. Ooh. That's what like makes them like, oh, it, it just makes them like lock in like, yep, I'm booking you because you're telling them like, hey, yeah, I got PVC props. Actually, they're brand new. So you'll be the first ones to use them uh, for, for this event. And they oh. get happy they're like brand new and for real. And I'm not even lying to this girl on March 22nd. I have an event this Friday coming up and I'm using those PVC props for the first time. I'm not lying to her, but you know, even if you are kind of, you know, fibbing a little bit, it's always good to like, let the client know, Hey, this is brand new. Like I say this all the time with my led inflatable. Cause I really take care of my led inflatable. I tell them, Oh, this is like a brand new inflatable. It's going to be the, like one of the first events that I'm using it for. So, you know, you guys are going to get it brand new. And then obviously I make sure it's clean. It looks good. And then when it's there, people don't even notice. And they're like, wow, this led inflatable is so nice. You know, same thing with the props, same thing with the backdrop. If you treat your stuff well, you could always make it seem like it's brand new. Like it just came out the box. Yeah. Like brand, you could just say brand new condition. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like it's brand new. Or no, like for these props, I told the girls like these are brand new, straight out the package. Like your your event's gonna be the first one you're using it for, and I think they just feel special. That it's like, oh wow, you you did this for me. Like you're making the client feel like you went out of your way to make sure that they get the best stuff from your business. I love that. I've never thought about doing that. Yeah, and you can also say too, you know, like you know, it's better that they're new because you know, in the rental space, a lot of the stuff gets damaged, and you know, it's good for you because everything is gonna be fresh. And you're not going to have dings in it. You're not going to have scuffs or scratches. Exactly. Um, like, bro, we had someone come today to pick up a, so we do the pickup, right? And um, the pickup booths are kind of in rough, rough shape. And um, I was just looking at it and I was just like, man, I was like, I think I was telling once I was like, I was like, this booth is pretty beat up. And then she was like, she was like, yeah, but like, that's because you own it. And like the people that rent it, we've never, she was like, remind me, she was like, no one's ever complained about the condition. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's just a psyche thing. It's in my head, you know, because it costs me money. So like, exactly. uh, yeah. I, I now I'm asking the customers, I'm always asking them when they drop it back off. I'm like, oh, what'd you think about the booth? Hopefully it wasn't too damaged. Um, well, I mean, that's what we're going to do now because I want to, I kind of got to make sure that they're okay with the quality, but it's just a scratch on the back. You know, you try to touch it up. Um, so I, I wanted to pivot and kind of transition. That's why I brought that up. Um, you know, we talked about the hack, whatever. So we got the catchy thumbnail and title uh, for the free photo booth. But moving forward, um, you know, being in the rental space, you know, having something that you 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 rent out. How is your attachment to your equipment? And like for having a photo booth for nine years, what is the status of your booth as far as like being brand new and like being one hundred percent brand new, and then zero? I want you to rate being zero, being completely destroyed. What, where does your booth fall after nine months of use? Uh, I want to say, okay, so I got it obviously here, brand new. Well, no, let's go up here. Like this, this means brand new, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, it's, it, 100. Started here, it started off here and then I had did a church event and I even, I remember like this, like yesterday I texted Drew, like so concerned about this. I was at a church event. I used the backdrop. And it was so windy, man. And you couldn't take, you couldn't like have control of this wind for nothing. Like you could have, you could have like the biggest and heaviest sandbags on there. And that backdrop was moving. It was just so windy. It wasn't the backdrop's fault. It wasn't the photo booth's fault. It was just the wind was insane. Um, and I remember I told the guy, I said, listen, watch my back. And we had sandbags down on the backdrop. So I thought everything was fine. So I said, watch my photo booth real quick. I'm, you know, going to literally, I could still see it from eyes view where my car was parked because it was an outside event. I said, I'm going to run to my car real quick and put these props because I had the props box. I said, I'm going to put this in the, my trunk. So I put it in my trunk and literally as I'm turning around to close my trunk, I see the backdrop just fall on my photo. And th again, with sandbags, but again, it wasn't the, it wasn't the backdrop's fault and the stability of the backdrop. It was just the wind was like a hurricane. It was like hurricane season. This is October, you know, of 2023. So it was just like th th that time of year in Jersey and anyone who's from New York, New Jersey area, they can vouch for me. The wind is insane uh, sometimes. So then when it fell, it fell on top of my photo booth and my photo booth actually fell back onto the concrete. And I was like, oh, my God, I was I almost cried, bro. And it went that's when it went from here to here. And I was like, you know, a couple of it was, And, you know, you know, and I give that photo booth so much props because that thing took a hard hit 
And, you know, a little scratch here and there, a little scratch on the back. It was all on the back. No cracks. The glass didn't break. The, the, the ring light was perfect. I tested everything out once I put it back up. I stand it up, you know, nothing got loose or anything. So I was like, wow, okay, this this proto could take a really bad hit because I'm tell I'm telling you, it literally said timber Dude, right onto concrete. Being a wrestling fan, if uh you have to give a wrestling move that the photo booth took, what wrestling move was it? Oh, probably a spear, man. Probably some gold <laughs> probably some Goldberg spear, freaking rhino spear. Oh, that that's... thing took freaking it took like a, a frog splash onto oh, the floor. Swanton bomb, Swanton bomb. But you know what? It it had some scruffies, scruffies and stuff. And I was kind of concerned because I had a sweet sixteen the next day after this event. And again, this church event was actually a free event. So I gave you know me having my photo booth get a little scruffed up during a free event kind of ticked me off a little bit. But I I let it go. And then I was like, oh man, I, I hope these people from the sweet sixteen don't even notice because it was in the back and I had the LED inflatable. No one notices, you know, if you really want, if I really want to, I could have went to Home Depot, got some little touch up paint, little white touch up paint and boom, it's back to perfect again. Uh, but I do get why people, you know, and like yourself who said, like, you get anxious when you start seeing your stuff get broken. And that goes for anything, a car, you know, when you get your first house, you know, like stuff like that, when you buy stuff that was worth a lot of money and it was a big investment, you don't want it to get damaged. You want it to be like that straight out of the package feeling every time you use it. Yeah. And I just came to the conclusion that, you know what, this photo booth has made me so much money where I could have buy I could have bought five more photo booths since then, maybe six, seven, eight more photo booths since then, you know, again, I'm going on to my $50,000 $50, mark into the business already, you know, soon and another three or four more events, I'm going to be like $50,000 in, you know, compared to the, at the time, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars photo booth I bought from you, how many photo booths now I could have bought with yeah. all this money that I made from the photo booth. So I just see it as, you know, it's it's just a it's a, at this point I'm seeing it I gotta stop seeing my photo booth as like you know a prized possession and just see it as an asset. This photo booth is working for me. I am the photo booth's boss. If later on I see the photo booth's not working the way I want it to no more, then I buy another one. Just how yeah. think about it, you're an you're an employee right and your boss works you to the end and you just can't work the way you used to no more. Your boss will just get rid of you and get a new a new employee just just like how you could get rid of your photo booth and buy another one. So mm -hmm. you know I just see that photo booth. As you know, you're working for me. I'll I'll work you until it's ran out, and then if I feel like it's time, I buy another photo booth. I don't know if that was a good example, but I'm trying here. I know I get where you're. I get where you're getting. You're coming at, and and like let's just be clear. Like the booth didn't break. It, it was just a scuff, right? No, no, it was a couple scratches in the back. It wasn't nothing crazy. Again, no glass shatter, no nothing. It was. Yeah. It was just where, where you t where you put the the head where the ring light on that yeah. part in the back the box part. It just got a little scruffies, but it wasn't nothing crazy, you know. Yeah, because which is too which which I love is like about you know, our photo booth said, like, if you wanted a replacement part, like, I think I told you it was like 35 bucks, 40 bucks or something really cheap. Yeah. You always say like the ring light is most expensive part. It's like a hundred dollars, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess I just kind of want to like cap this, you know, segment off here by saying, letting you guys know is kind of said it already, but like most people aren't going to notice that scuff. All they're going to be attracted to is the light, the shiny light. They're not they're not checking your booth out from top to bottom, you know, like they're just looking at the light. They're looking at the screen. They're taking the photo. They're looking at the prints and that it's like, um, like some people get self-conscious, conscious, right? Conscious. That was hard to say. Um, but again, you got to remember it's, it's rental equipment. It's never going to look as good as it did the day it arrived to your house. When you opened it up, when you put it together like the car. and this, I tell everyone like the sooner you can get over that, that attachment, more doors will open up to you. I mean, Tyler, I don't, I can't even tell you how many people are scared to do a drop off because they're scared of a scuff or a ding here or there. And um, I mean, if you can tell everybody you you've just done your first drop off recently, right? Like how was yeah. that experience, man? Well, I'm already three drop offs in. Uh, I got to the point where I'm starting to see like how more time I might have now, you know, don't get wrong. I do like doing my media. I do record. So what I like to do usually is I'll, get to the event. I'll drop off my photo booth. I'll do my little intro video. Like what's up guys, Tyler here from TKR events, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll leave, let the photo booth run its thing. And I'll come back maybe 15 minutes before the party ends. Usually that's when people are using the photo booth the most. So I'll just get like five or six people using the photo booth. And then I'll do my end video. Like, All right, guys, we're almost at the end of the event. Look at this, blah, 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 blah. Boom. And it looks like I was there the whole time, but really I wasn't. So Doing my first three drop offs, in, you know, this past couple months uh, since, you know, I just started my drop offs really in January. So 
for the last three months, I guess we've been into this new year. Um, I think it's great. I love the drop off. I really think that it's saving me so much time. You know, yeah, there's been some times where actually one of my last drop offs, I saw the girl actually leaning on my photo booth. She was sitting down in the inflatable and just like resting on it like a like a chair. And I was like, ah, maybe the drop off's not for me because my attitude was about to spike. But I was like, you know what? Let, let me she saw me she's like she like got up and she's like oh wait wait that's a photo booth like owner like i gotta go uh but i like it you know again the one thing i learned in this business is and, and this is this goes for anything is that no one's gonna treat your stuff better than how you treat it you know no one's gonna treat your business better than how you treat it you know if you had rented out your uh rented out your car on turo right if you have a car and you have an extra car and you're renting it out on turo you know and it's a brand new Mercedes Benz, right? You rent it out for like 200 bucks a day. You know, at the end of the day, when you get that car back a week later, your car's not going to be treated how you treat it, like nice and vacuumed and your dashboard's clean. No, you might have McDonald's all, all over your floor. You know, yeah. you might have dust and stuff like that. And that's just how people are going to treat because it it's not theirs. They don't care. You know, they might make it seem like they care in the beginning, but they don't, you know. So Dude. Um, you just have to learn to live with it, you know. You know what's crazy that you mentioned Turo? I always talk about Turo when we're talking about the rental space. Just let's just all think about the math here. Uh, let's just say a Mercedes, a decent one, right? 40,000, 50,000, maybe, right? You can rent it probably on Turo for 250 a day. You guys can buy a photo booth for 15, 1600 bucks and rent it out in not even a full day and make more money than that person on Turo is making. Exactly. That's what I love about this business. It's insane. You did the if you do the percentage there, which I'm not going to do because I'll probably take me a second to do it. It's probably 15, 20 times better as we're talking about ROI. Like you can't beat mm -hmm. that, man. I love the photo booth business. It's it's there's no other business where you can spend so little and make so much in such a small amount of time. Um, and I I wanted to to talk talk about uh the photo booth pickup. Hopefully I can convince you to start thinking about doing this because. I'm telling you, man, it's taking over. A, a lot of our events are now pickup. Like um, I meant one of one of my good friends that's local out here. Um, I put him on, got him a got him a, a digi booth. Bro, today he booked five. Today, five of them, Tyler. He's like, I'm gonna need to buy another booth and rent a few more from you. I'm like, for sure, whatever you gotta do. It's popping off, dude. Like, and it, I I hate to say it, it's 100 percent because we're the lowest price you can't beat a 199 all day all night shoot all weekend photo booth rental yeah and that also don't include your add-ons because you still have your add-ons with that 199 like your yes. prop table prop table props you know if they want the backdrop if they want the inflatable if you had one or something like that you know those are all add-ons so that 199 could turn into 400 yep yep absolutely and, and it top, they're doing all the work they're doing all the work and he doesn't have a store like me, but he's meeting people at Starbucks. He's just saying like, we're a small business. Typically we drop it off, but we're giving you a better deal. So, you know, we can meet right here. Their people are more than happy to do it. And, and one concern of his was like, there's no way that these events are going to go smoothly. He's like, dude, I've had more troubles with being at the event versus these drop-offs. Um, dude, I'm telling you, you will crush it you would, you're going to love it. It's the most, honestly, I thought about it. I was like, there's no way there's going to be a more passive photo booth business. Even if you physically ship a booth to somebody, that's going to take more time packaging up the booth, dropping it off, then having them receive an opening up. Um, but and mailing, you. <laughs> yeah, mailing it back, but there are companies like that. I, I mean, that's not a bad business idea. You just have to have the right booth to do that, you know, to where it's lightweight, easy to set up and um, whatnot. Um, but I guess we could talk about it, man. We'll, 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 uh, we'll get into the last topic of the day, but really quick, you guys, I want to show you a clip. Um, I just graduated from chiropract chiropractor school. And I wanted to show you this quick little clip clip that we made earlier for photo booth 101. Here you go. You graduated from chiropractor school, chiropractor. Did I say that wrong? Chiropractor? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Thank you for coming to my chiropractor office. I am not gonna lie to you. This is the worst case I have ever seen. Your posture is terrible. It's gonna be painful, but I think we can do it. Okay, so take a deep breath in and you're gonna feel this one on your base. 
So I need you to breathe slowly on three. One, two, three. So this one's gonna hurt the most, but you're gonna feel so much relief. On three, three. Ooh, all right. Just breathe, breathe. All right, that should do it. Look at that. You look brand new, how do you feel? Oh, you're not. You're BS. <laughs> oh, dude, I did. Chiropractic. I never told you guys. Yeah, I'm like like doing adjustments, chiropractic. Also, I found this. Not found this. I got this mailed to my house today that I wanted to bring up to people. So this is like a local flyer, right? It's a local flyer. It literally says support your local business. Okay, this is a pizza place that you know. Obviously, you have to pay to be on a certain page of the magazine. But right here on the magazine. And this says it on every page. It says right here, it says uh, for advertising, uh, wait, it says for affordable advertising, call this number. See? Huh. So that goes to show that you could put, you know, a great way to market because this was sent to our, my house, which means if this was sent to my apartment complex, this was sent to probably everybody in, in my town, plus probably other towns because this is, this is stuff from like East Brunswick and like other towns like around my area. So that means probably thousands of people got this. Hmm. This is thousands of ways that people could see your, you know, thousands of eyes that people could see your photo booth business. So I want to bring that up that, you know, most towns probably have local like news flyers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. There's one out here too. It's called like the penny saver too. So the, like, I know exactly what you mean. I'm curious though. There's not a price though, right? Like on how much it costs. Uh, that's what it says for affordable advertising. Call this, like it says, call 732-995-5493. So tomorrow, I'm off of work because tomorrow I'm going to my uncle's funeral. My uncle passed away this week. One of like my, my older uncle, um, like my grand, my uh, I'm sorry, my uh, grandmother's sister's husband. So like my uncle in law, I guess, um, he passed away. So I'm gonna call this number tomorrow because I took off of work. I'm gonna call in the morning and find out how much does it cost to be on like I don't know page, I don't know like page six for example. Yeah, like, what's the no, man? Page six has like two different advertising. So like down here is like a, I don't know, car company up here is like an ice cream spot. So even if I'm on like sharing a page with somebody, all I need is this. That's crazy. Yeah, dude, if you do it, man, let me know. Honestly, it'd be cool if you did it just to get one, just to have it. Yeah. Just to have it be like, I was on a flyer. Like that's cool. You know, it's funny, Tyler, you know, one of my goals by the end of the year is to, to be on a billboard. You know, they have a, Oh, man. You know, I think we should talk about this on the podcast. I think this will be cool. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. no. I was just I was just saying, since you brought up the flyer thing, I was going to literally make one of the dumbest billboards for Photo Booth 101. So. So, no, you know, and what I was saying over here, they have a, um, like, you know, those bus stops. You know, like the bus stops. So the bus stops have like advertising things on the, the probably California has it, too, because New Jersey and California are pretty similar. The bus stop has like an advertising thing. And by my house, they have one that's actually open that says advertise your business here. And it mm -hmm. says a phone number. And I've been meaning to call and just see how much it is just to put, maybe put it for like a month or two. Like I was like, how much could it cost? A hundred bucks, you know, to put a poster there. They put the poster for you and everything. You just send them like what you want on there. And I was like, oh man, book your party rental business. And I would just put like a picture of a bouncy house, a photo booth and stuff like that. And now that summer's coming up, I need to start getting the bouncy house out there too. So I was like, oh, I'm going to see. But then when I saw this today, I'm like, this can't cost more than like 50 or $60 to get your thing on here. You know what I mean? Like it can't, there's no way. Oh, no, I bet you it is. Let's make a bet. I bet you it's over 60. What do you think? A hundred bucks? I bet you over a hundred bucks. It, okay. I, I'll say it on most is 200 bucks to put it on here. That's probably what I was going to say. But uh, like back, back to the billboards though. I don't know if you have it out there, but in California, there's quite a few of them. Electronic billboards. To where it's literally 10 seconds an ad goes to the next one. I think that might be the cheapest route to go because one, there's no tangible paper or nothing. No one has to go up there and put it on and all that. That might be expensive. So I think that might be the most efficient way to do it. You know, yeah, they have they have that in the city in New York. They have like those in Times Square. You know, if you ever seen like videos of Times Square, how they have all those yeah. electronic billboards all over the buildings, they they do have that, but to advertise your stuff in the city is like DJ Los would have a better chance of doing that than me. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah. Bro, we gotta send him uh the info for the for the intro. Yeah, I know. Uh, he was actually asking about it for me last week. He's like, hey, what happened, happened with that intro thing? I'm like, I got to talk to Joy. So we all been pretty busy. I said, I haven't really spoke to him this week. Yeah. Well, speaking of intro, let's do the outro. Thank you guys for watching. Um, a little bit shorter podcast than usual, but I think we definitely, um, definitely covered a lot here, man. We went over quite a few things. And um, Tyler, is there anything you want to share with the audience? Anything you got coming up? I don't know, maybe something about a YouTube channel or something? Oh man. Yeah. I guess if you want to say that, uh, yeah, I actually have a YouTube, my own YouTube channel coming out. Uh, it's going to be called, uh, well, obviously it's going to be called TKR events. Uh, my wife and I are coming out actually with a little podcast. Um, I don't want to talk too much detail about it cause there's still a lot of, in works, but we're going to have a YouTube channel coming out soon. I'll get all the names and details for it probably within the next podcast that we'll be on. So, uh, but for now, TKR underscore events on Instagram, that's where you'll find us and you can reach out to us and we will be there to support. Love it. I, I just cat is out of the bag, man. Tyler's YouTube channel coming out soon, you guys. And of course, when it's out, we'll go ahead and start linking that in the description too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. You guys, this is probably episode 30. We're, we've done a lot of these podcasts, so make sure to watch all the other podcasts. We're on Spotify and Apple music, all that, I think. So thank you guys for watching. God bless. See you soon.